Sudakar asks, "What will Metropolis mean for Ethereum?" Uh, great question, Sudakar. So Metropolis is the third out of the four uh, planned transitions for Ethereum. Ethereum was deployed in a manner that expects that there will be certain major transitions. Uh, between different stages of development. The first, uh, the first stage of development for Ethereum was called Frontier. And Frontier was uh, the stage of development that involved the pre-sale of uh, Ethereum, and um, the first essentially uh, pre-beta version of Ethereum that ran on the network. The current version of Ethereum, or the current stage of Ethereum that we're running today, is called Homestead. Homestead is planned to end um, in the next year, and will transition to the third stage of Ethereum called Metropolis. Uh, it's also predicted and named in advance that the final stage of Ethereum, which will be the um, stage that Ethereum settles in, if you like, will be called Serenity. So Frontier. Homestead, Metropolis, and Serenity are the four evolutionary stages of Ethereum. Metropolis was actually planned for 2017 or perhaps the end of 2016, but because of the DAO incident, uh, the fork to Classic, uh, several denial of service attacks, and other problems that occurred during Homestead, instead the developers were delayed and distracted. Uh, fixing security problems and doing a number of hard forks to address certain vulnerabilities discovered in Homestead. Um, as a result, Metropolis has been delayed, but it is expected in 2018, and, and it is moving pretty fast now. Metropolis introduces uh, a number of different change, changes uh, to Ethereum, and it's going to happen in two stages, which are codenamed Byzantium and Constantinople. Uh, Byzantium is the first sta stage of Metropolis, and Constantinople is the second stage of Metropolis. Each of those will be a hard fork, or perhaps uh, more than one hard fork, that will introduce a number of uh, changes into the Ethereum system. Uh, a couple of big things that are happening, um, specifically for Byzantium, which is stage one of Metropolis, are the, introdu the introduction of ZK Snarks. Uh, which allows Ethereum to be able to use the technology introduced by Zcash uh, to do uh, zero-knowledge transactions for very, very high levels of confidentiality and privacy. Um, ZK Snarks and native execution of ZK Snarks has been a goal of Vitalik Buterin for a while now, and it will be introduced with Byzantium. The other very big change uh, with uh, introduced with the first stage of Metropolis is the uh, move towards proof of stake. So today, uh, Ethereum operates using a proof of work, a mining algorithm uh, called ETHash or ETHash. Uh, ETHash is um, is a uh, mining protocol that uses ha hashing with the SHA-3 Ketchak-256 algorithm, similar to how uh, Bitcoin does uh, mining with SHA-256, with a few changes that make it a bit more memory-intensive to prevent the easy development of ASICs. Um, in the first stage of Metropolis Byzantium, a new mechanism will be introduced, which is uh, proof of stake. And proof of stake will be using a protocol called Casper. Uh, proof of stake is different from proof of work in that it allows validation of transactions without mining, instead using validators who um, stake or um, bet an amount of ether in the validation of a block. And if they validate a block that is broadly accepted by the network, they receive a small reward in proportion to the amount of stake that they bet on the validation of that block. And if they approve a block that the rest of the network rejects, then they lose their stake. And so this mechanism of reward and punishment is different than the mechanism of mining that requires computation with repeated hashing and is going to be introduced with Byzantium. Um, Ethereum is not going to move directly to proof of stake. Instead, in the first stage, it's going to move to a hybrid environment where it uses proof of work and proof of stake simultaneously. 
Another big change that's coming with Byzantium is the diffusing of the difficulty bomb. Ethereum had a planned um, system within it called the difficulty bomb that was intended to force the developers to move to proof of stake by making it increasingly difficult to mine using proof of work. That difficulty bomb is expected to increase the validation of blocks from uh, every 15 seconds, sorry, every 14 seconds to more than 15 seconds in the next three months, and then within six months to 28 seconds or more, and then quickly exponentially increase the difficulty until it is impossible to mine uh, transactions on Ethereum. Um, now, that's uh, obviously not ideal, because due to the delays in the deployment of Metropolis, uh, now the difficulty bomb is upon us. And so one of the first changes that happens with Byzantium is pushing back um, the imposed difficulty that the difficulty bomb creates uh, to give more time to deploy proof of stake. A couple of other really interesting developments in Metropolis and Byzantium are the introduction of account abstractions, where um, gradually Ethereum is moving to blur the line between the two account types that are available. Um, at the moment, Ethereum has two types of accounts. There are externally owned accounts, or EOAs, which are accounts that are owned by systems outside of Ethereum with private public key pairs. Um, wallets, for example, in Ethereum are externally owned accounts. Um, and contracts. Contracts are the other type of account where money is managed by um, the code executed by a smart contract. They have some dif differences between them, and the way they're validated is different. The way they uh, pay for gas is different, uh, and these differences are going to gradually be abstracted so that um, they behave more and more the same until eventually Ethereum only has one type of account. And there's no difference between an account that has a private key behind it or some other mechanism for um, authorization or signing. Um, and an account that's managed by smart contract code, they will behave identically. Another big change is the introduction of the ability for intermediary accounts to pay for gas. So today, if you run a transaction that executes smart contract code, that transaction has to pay for the gas. The smart contract itself can't pay for the gas. And if the smart contract calls another smart contract, which calls another smart contract, which calls another smart contract, then the gas is still paid by the first transaction that initiated this chain of calls. Um, with Byzantium, the intention is to allow intermediate uh, contracts to pay for gas themselves. So you can call a contract with a transaction, and then when that contract calls another contract, it can pay for all or some of that gas. I think that includes most of the changes we'll see in Byzantium, but of course it's still in flux. And uh, there may be more changes introduced in Byzantium, or maybe some of the changes will be pushed back into Constantinople uh, for the second part of the Metropolis uh, upgrade. <laughs>